Hey, I'm about to show you 12 different DAWs and I challenge you to find Reaper in less than 5 seconds. Are you ready? Go! Now, did you guess? Of course you did! They're all Reaper! It's just Reaper using 12 different themes. You see, unlike any other DAW, Reaper doesn't really care about how you make it look. In fact, they encourage you to customize it and they have made it easier and easier over the years. But why am I saying this? Well, I think it's fascinating. Like the other day I was watching this video about how you were able to customize almost any app back in the early internet. Imagine being able to make your Spotify look like this. Those were amazing times and I feel very grateful that Reaper feels like that today. They have continuously pushed updates to make it easier for you to customize your experience. And this also created a huge theming community that have made some of the most incredible interfaces I've ever seen. So I was thinking it would be fun to look back and see how all of this happened. I'm gonna be installing and reacting to all of the Reaper versions. I'm gonna rate every default theme, that's gonna be fun. And also I'm gonna give you some context on why some of the things look and work the way they are today. But more importantly, I want to address the question that's been on my mind for Ever, is being this flexible actually a good thing? You will notice that there's some trade-offs along the way in order to make it this flexible and I think about this a lot and I would love to hear your thoughts after watching this video. So come join me, it will be fun and interesting, let's have some fun, check out all of the reapers that ever been. I think there are other crucial things that deserve more attention. Alright, I'm pretty excited about this. I've never done this before. And if you're wondering how I'm doing this, it's pretty easy. And you can do it as well. Just Google Reaper old versions. And you will be able to download and see all of the changes that were done to every single Reaper version release. And it's only 170 kilobytes. Got a bunch of things in here. This comes with a sample project. That is, that is cool. I'm looking forward to that. Right now, yes. Are you guys ready? Oh my god. Is that the logo? Is that a site and a pencil? What is that? Oh, it says Reaper. What is this line though? I'm not ready. I, let's go. Ooh, this works. It honestly looks really good. Okay, let's see if this plays. This is amazing. Uh, I, I guess Justin recorded this or maybe someone else. There's no grid, it's just seconds. But you do have a mixer and you do have some effects in here. Guitar, phaser, guitar amp. There was an amp in here already. That is very awesome. So filters, delay. So this is what you would see in a blank project. You can right click and insert track. So let's call this track audio. You have a meter in here to check what you're doing. You start recording. Uh, nothing happens. What did I do? Oh, it was recording. So save all. Okay, I guess you don't see the waveforms when you record. But let's now check out the options that we have for customization. That's why we're here. Okay, so you, you were able to change all of these colors. So is there any theme in here? Oh, there's a theme in here included. Let's check it out. It made the thing green. That's cool. So yes, this is all the customization you get in the first version of Reaper. This is amazing. And this made me really happy to see any surprisingly looks and works really well this was 2005 and that's amazing all right that was reaper zero and after 131 updates in less than a year we finally get the first major version of reaper this is the first commercial release and now reaper costs 40 dollars and now every time you run it it will show you this super famous window for comparison here's reaper zero and here's reaper one what is that logo let me see it from oh that is adorable i love this logo so much reaper i like this this is the best logo why did they change this all right let's check out reaper 1.09 it looks more polished you actually have great lines i'm excited to hear the song let's hear it <laughs> That's just so cool because it shows you how Reaper works. I don't know why they don't do any sample projects anymore. Okay, this whole song is 400 kilobytes. This whole session is 400 kilobytes. So now let's explore this a little bit more. You have folders. There's three states for the folder, just like we have today. IO, envelopes, the show it track effects. So let's try out. Oh, this is exactly <laughs> recon from today. I guess they have changed some stuff under the hood but all of these things have remained unchanged throughout all these years so and what is this oh and this is solo i guess what that is so strange they're 
they're both the same color so let's check out the preferences okay so now you can change a lot more colors there's themes oh there's a huge list of th themes but i'm guessing these themes only change the color of the interface for example if you load this oh okay it changed all of the colors but not the images that is so nice i love these color themes gray matter oh this is awesome so yeah that's all the customization that you could do so insert oh there's actually midi drawing some notes oh this midi editor is not so bad once i'm done with this it's asking me to save this file you have real synth and real sample matic so real synth what you only have attack release and shape Ooh. okay i gave this theme a solid six out of ten pretty good ideas just need some polishing now one year and 181 updates later this sounds so crazy we have reaper version 2 in this version designer white tie joins the game who is now in charge of all the graphic needs in Reaper even to this day. And we now have more advanced features that allow you to assign images to the interface. And this was my first impression. Uh, I don't... Ugh, that's right, they they used to use this... I, I hate this look already. <laughs> I, I hate this green tint. It looks diseased. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It looks so ew. <laughs> I don't like this. Okay, so this is a full project and it looked like this. Oh, nice. We have a mixer in here with all of the effects. Okay, so right away, the track control panel makes a lot of sense. Like, the fader in here, that is awesome. And the panning like this, that is very, very cool. When you make it like this small, you have the fader and the mute and solo buttons. But I just realized the mute is red, background red. And when you press it, it's just red again that is weird because they all look like it's muted so let's hide the mixer and you're able to see the meters in here but you had to make it this large to, in order to see the meter this is good stuff okay yeah you can see the sands in here so that's really really good oh the midi editor is much better that is good and the experience is much better now while i'm not a fan of the green tint i must say that this is a huge UX improvement. I've been playing with it for a while and it feels very intuitive and easy to use and very snappy and responsive. So I give this theme a 7.5 out of 10. If it wasn't for the green, I would give it an 8. But yeah, I think it's a really good direction that they're going with this. Two years later and now we have Reaper 3. It's 2009 and this is exciting because this is the one I used. I started with this Reaper. So during the installation, I realized that the demo song is gone. There's no more sample projects now. They were fun. I don't know why they don't do it anymore. Now this version came with huge improvements, especially on the graphics side. They now have an all native graphic rendering engine, which performs and looks way better. But so here's what Reaper 2 looked like. And here's Reaper 3. And this look is fantastic. This is such an improvement over the previous version. It's very responsive. Like as you move this, everything stretches in real time. So any changes layout depending on the size, that is very nice. And these faders are gorgeous. Everything has rounded corners. And I especially love the indentation. You see, now there's this line that indicates which is the folder and which are the children. So it makes it really simple. And let's play this thing. Look at those meters and look at these faders. And then you can span this and have all of your stuff in here. Show the sands and just click and drag. It's, it's beautiful. I very much love this theme. You can now click and drag. To create the sense, let's check out the media editor. Ooh, look at that piano. And it looks so nice. It's the best editor we've seen so far today. So yeah, I give this theme a solid 8.5 out of 10. I think it's awesome and it still holds up today. I would use it today and I think it's one of the best. After two years, we have Reaper 4. And I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. Here's Reaper 3 and here's Reaper 4. It's honestly gorgeous. I love this so much. This is obviously one of my favorite themes of all time. Everything looks so well placed and responsive. Look at this. It's just so good. It's so good. So let me just walk you through some of my favorite things in here. My number one thing is this track layout. Notice how everything is just compact and perfect and logically placed and very responsive as i resize this everything will stretch 
and change layouts depending on the size and it just has everything available at all times look at how if i put it this size you will always see the mute and solo buttons so this layout makes a lot of sense to me it just shows you a lot of helpful information and now you have the mixer which is another fantastic thing and it's just very very nice i love this spaces for the effects inserts and let's show the sands they look like this and you can also show the effects parameters so if you click in here effects parameter list oh, maybe the attack in there and you should be able to see it in here that's just so helpful this thing came with a lot of visual improvements but not only that a lot of user experience improvements this version introduced the ability to change layouts in the mixer and the track panel. For the track panel you got these 5 handy layouts. Default, peak meter, minimal, recording and vertical. And for the mixer panel you got these 8 amazing layouts. Default, big meter, default with pan at the bottom, large, narrow, recording and sidebar. And what makes this even cooler is that you can use the auto layout feature from the SWS extension. So for example, you could make all of your bosses have the sidebar layout by naming them Boss. I really like the rounded corners for items and they show you really well when an item starts and ends. Everything has just the right amount of contrast. Right away, it's very inviting and friendly. And another super cool thing is that you have this diagonal like line indicating that this is the folder and this is the children. So if as you create more folders, it will start looking like this. And notice how all of the controls is still aligned. So that's amazing because in new versions of Reaper, alignment is an issue. Like look at this, this is a lot of folder levels, but everything is still aligned and works really well. Another huge addition to this version is the introduction to Walter, and it's their own scripting language that allows you to customize the interface however you want. This allows theme creators to make incredible stuff like this, or this, and this, and this, and this, and this. The kind of thing that makes Reaper not look like Reaper, like that. Also, White Tide created a whole bunch of helpful documentation that is still used today as it's now the standard. So okay, that's Reaper 4. And needless to say, this is a 10 out of 10 for me. Honestly, if Reaper looked like this today, I wouldn't mind. Now, Reaper 4 actually lasted like 4 years, so that was the longest so far. And then, in 2015, Reaper 5 is introduced. So here's what Reaper 4 looked like, and here's Reaper 5. This looks very, very clean. I like that they kept the same style, just looks flatter and more minimalistic. Which is nice, it was a, a good direction because it looks less overwhelming and it's a bit more focused and I like that. Now there's some reorganization of the buttons in here. As you can see, now all of the buttons are next to each other. So as you increase and decrease the size of this, it's gonna shift around like this. And one thing I don't like so much is that sometimes you will have your mutant solo buttons in here but sometimes you will have it right here. This is a bit of an issue because sometimes the buttons may not be where you would expect them to be, especially if you start making folders and things start to move around like this. It's a bit unpredictable and if I make this like this, I no longer have the mute and solo buttons like I used to. So now I have the route the panning and the mute and solo buttons take this much to show up. However, I would say the style of these buttons are so nice. I especially love that you can now have a volume knob in here that saves a lot of space. But yeah, overall pretty good. I was really happy with this theme. I did have a few nitpicks, but nothing major. I give this theme 9.2. Just because I was not very happy with the way the mute and solo buttons would shift around so much. But other than that, I think it was fantastic and I loved it. And the next one, I'm sure you're all familiar, is Reaper Sits, which came out in 2019. So here's what Reaper 5 looked like, and here's Reaper Sits. And my first impression is obviously dark mode. Now at first glance, everything is very minimal. And as you can see, there's way less buttons in the TCP which makes everything look very clean. Now you have the theme adjuster. You can change the brightness, the gamma, but not only that, you can also change a lot of the way that the buttons are displayed. And so right off the box, you might wonder where are all the buttons? And it turns out that they're hidden based on these conditions. So if the mixer is visible, a lot of these buttons will 
not show up. So if I hide the emitter, now you will see the route button and the panning button. And I think it was a strange decision to set this as a default because it definitely made a lot of people confused when they couldn't find the route or the panning button in the track panel. So this is how it's supposed to look with all of the buttons. They also follow the same idea of Reaper 5 of having all of the buttons next to each other. And honestly, the buttons look so good. But you can see how this misalignment of buttons can cause some troubles. And there's a way to kind of solve this and it's by going into the theme adjustment and in the align controls choosing extend name so now all of the buttons should align by extending the name but it's not as responsive as reaper 5 because now the track name won't stretch or change layout very smoothly it's kind of very jumpy and sometimes really harsh and a lot of times it just looks like something's wrong with this so yeah there's a lot of room for error and that's one of the trade-off of making this so customizable and another thing that you can do in here is that you can set the folder indentation level but that created another issue where it looks very harsh there's no longer the little line that indicates which is the folder and which is the children i really miss that but well, you can now adjust the distance. In Reaper Sits, they finally introduced the high DPI version of the theme. Now you can scale the theme up to 150% and 200%, which should look pretty sharp in most monitors. Now, I gotta admit, when I first used this, I was not super into it, but after using it for a while, it honestly looks very clean and it's something that I very appreciate about this theme. But one thing I really miss from the previous theme is the ability to have all of those track layouts. Because if you go to track layouts in here, now you see just A, B, and C. And this is the same thing with Reaper 7. And it's because they're letting you create this layout by using the theme adjuster. So now if you want to create another layout, you will have to go to layout B. And in here, it's where you will tweak all of the settings that you want to see in that layout and you can totally create a lot of cool layouts with this there's a lot of options to tweak and it should cover a lot of specific needs but i kind of wish we didn't have to do this you see back in reaper 4 you would right click the track and get a bunch of self-explanatory layouts these are all cleverly designed and work right away when you do this in reaper 6 you see layout a b and c Right away, this is not intuitive for the user and they will most likely feel overwhelmed or not really have an idea of what layout to create with all of these options. I think a great approach would be to have a bunch of predefined layouts like we had in Reaper 4 and also layout A, B and C for the advanced users that want to build a specific layouts. But yeah, as you can see, it's more flexible but you kind of have to put in the work. Now, another thing that is worth mentioning is the theme assembler that YTI developed for this theme. It was introduced back in 2020. So basically you will have an interface like this where you can click and just select any other alternative for the bottom. And it's really fun. There's a lot of really cool options in here. You can change your meter, the volume knob, the pan knob, the transport controls, the faders, and all those things. So my thoughts about this theme is that I think it's very close to being perfect. And I don't know, I wish everything was aligned and compact and things like this didn't happen. It kind of made having folders and indentation a pain because everything just shifts like that. But I understand why they did it because it's now flexible and it allows you to put any button anywhere you want. And with that, I say this is a solid, I'm gonna draw it in here. I will give this one an 8.1 out of 10. Now let's go to the final theme. Now, once again, four years later, we have Reaper 7 and the theme is not a big change. So here's what Reaper 6 look like and here's Reaper 7. Honestly, my first impressions were like, I don't know how I feel about a lot of these things. But let's start with the things I like. The track background with the different color shades is awesome. And you will be able to adjust intensity with the theme adjuster. I also really like that you can show the fat inserts in the right side of the TCP. This is massively helpful. However, I think it's very weird that when it's empty, it looks like this and that's very jarring and it doesn't let you quickly add an effects to it. You can change this in the adjuster, but I think there should be an empty state by default. Just like I have in the Reaper Tips theme, where you can just insert any effect and you will have all of your spaces in there. Now, you may wonder how to get access to this theme adjuster I've been talking about, but by the time I'm making this video, it's not really ready yet and it's been a very ambitious project that White Tide is putting so much effort into. Now, here's what I don't like. 
I feel like the style is a bit all over the place, like some of these buttons look great by itself, but when you see them all together, it doesn't feel very cohesive. The meters don't have any numbers, and even though you can make them appear with the theme adjuster, I think it's such a weird default that they are hidden. By default, all buttons are misaligned, and this is definitely not a great look. But using the theme adjuster, you can make them align by extending the name. And this actually works better than what they did in default sets, because it also aligns the bottom row of the button. And I like that when you resize it, it's not gonna completely break like default sets. The mute and solo buttons are now inside the track, and they might shift around if you add a folder or resize it. And I care a lot about consistent mute and solo buttons. This is something I'm going to be reaching for a lot of times, and it's very frustrating when they're not in the consistent place. I don't like the flat effects inserts. I think they're very hard to read, especially when they're bypass or offline. I very much dislike the fat insert area. It feels very disorienting when there are no lines and it's just a black background. Also, the separation line between the inserts and the sands is very difficult to see. The sands are way too minimalistic and they're very hard to read. You used to be able to see a line filling the whole bar, but now all you see is a knob that is also very hard to read. And I want to quickly mention that by the time I'm making this video, White Tie created a mod of the default 7 theme called the Anti Theme. And this thing is a huge improvement, honestly. The buttons are beautiful and very consistent. I love that. And I think my only nitpick is that some of the elements are way too dark and lack contrast, like the faders. Nevertheless, this is gonna work with the incoming theme adjuster, so that's very cool. So I give this thing a 6 out of 10. I don't know, I'm not convinced yet. Maybe it might change in the future, like I thought Reaper sits at the beginning looked really bad, but then started to grow on me. All right, here are my final thoughts. This is just my opinion, and it's totally okay if we disagree. Honestly, I have mixed feelings, and it mostly has to do with some of the defaults and the introduction of the theme adjuster since Reaper 6. On one hand, I love how easy and deeply you can customize with it. It's a major milestone for accessibility, letting everyone very finely adjust their workspace. That's incredible, and no other DAW comes close. But I worry that too much flexibility comes at the cost of intuitive, responsive layouts with well-placed buttons. Personally, I would gladly sacrifice just a little bit of that customization if it means that we can get more cohesive designs. For example, is it really worth adding the ability to adjust the track indentation if it's gonna completely downgrade the visual experience? While I respect the ambition behind the theme adjuster and the hard work put into it, I think there are other crucial things that deserve more attention. First, I will focus all efforts into making the default interface as polished and as intuitive as possible. Users shouldn't have to deal with defaults like misaligned buttons, no numbers in their meters, or weird behaviors like track controls disappearing when the mixer is open. And honestly, the default theme for Reaper 7 doesn't make a great first impression, and I'm sure you will be able to make it better with the adjuster, but my point is that ideally, the regular user shouldn't have to do that. I think most people will be overwhelmed by all of these options. I remember when it came out, and I still see it today, a lot of people wondering why are there no numbers in their meters. Turns out you had to enable the meter numbers using the theme adjuster. But the theme adjuster is not ready yet. And more importantly, hiding the numbers in the meters in a DAW is such a bizarre default choice. I think a lot of people would love to see more user experience upgrades, like a tree view for the FETS window, subfolders for the FETS browser, a piano roll color map, the ability to pin a track in the mixer or TCP, away from previewing the media explorer of each file, an optional note field into the tracks, a node based effects browser, post fader effects, the ability to freely move the plugin in any effects slot, razor edit in the media editor, input output gain knobs on the plugin window, a better way to color tracks, and this list goes on and on. And I would honestly love to see the plugins get a redesign. I think they very much deserve it. And also a redesign of some of the core parts. So yeah, I just think those things are far more important than having hundreds of new options in the theme adjuster. That being said, I'm still super grateful for everything that Reaper offers. Like it's easy for me to just make this video and critic all of these things, but it's a much tougher job to actually implement solutions that will please everyone. Cocos is a very small but really hardworking team that I very much respect and admire. And they have been implementing a lot of user experience improvements lately, and I very much love to see that. And on the plus side, if you're not into the default theme, there's 
tons of incredible options out there with all kinds of layouts that will work for you. Reaper has done an incredible job at making every theme compatible, fully functional, regardless of the version that you use. Or better yet, you can simply not care about any of this and just use Reaper like most people do. I'm just stupid passionate about these things and I could talk for hours about it. Anyways, let me know what you think. I super look forward to reading your comments and thank you so, so much for listening to me and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye.